Hello everyone and welcome to another Spine Animation tutorial. In the last tutorial, you've learned how to create a rig for the character, how to use meshes and weights in Spine, and in this video, I'll show you how to create this simple idle animation. But before we start, make sure you subscribe to our channel before you miss any useful content from us. Ok, back to Spine Animation. Let's switch to Animate mode to start animating our King of Veggies. I usually start with the core bones, because they affect the child bones. So, I choose the bone here in the center, create a keyframe using the Translate tool, then proceed to the frame number 20, and move the bone a little bit higher. Now, here is something important. Make sure you have this Auto Key option enabled, because it will create another keyframe each time you make changes to the rig, like the position of the bones, rotation angle, scale, etc. Okay. Now, I'm going back to the frame number 0 and press Ctrl-C on Windows or Command-C on Mac and copy the keyframe. Then, I'm switching to the frame number 40 and pasting the keyframe there. Let's click Play to see the result. Alright, we've got the body of our character moving up and down in a loop, as if it is breathing. This is the core movement for our idle animation. This is like the basis for all other tiny movements that we will add on top of this one. Here, we can make it even higher so that the movement will be more significant. Ok, great. Now, let's add some movement for the arms as well. And I'm switching to Rotate tool and creating a keyframe on frame number 0. Then moving to the frame number 20 and holding the left mouse key to rotate the arm a bit closer to the character's body. Then again, copying the frame number 0 and pasting it on the frame number 40. Good. Let's do the same for the second arm. Keyframe on frame number 0, rotation on the frame number 20, and placing the copy of the frame number 0 on the frame number 40. Awesome. Let's not waste our time and just do the same for the bottom of the garment. Keyframing the initial position, rotating it on frame number 20, and closing the loop on frame number 40. Same steps one more time. Great! Let's click play to see how it looks. Ok, now the character looks like it's really breathing, but there are still some dead areas that should move as well. In general, I usually animate every single part of the body, so that the movement looks more natural. So, let's make the belly move a bit higher as well, and I'm going to use scale tool this time. Once again, keyframe on 0, then go into the frame number 20, and making our bone shorter on X axis only. The red handle, by the way, controls the X axis, and the green one controls the Y axis. I know it's not very intuitive at the beginning, but you'll get used to it very quickly. And if you're more comfortable with the numbers, you can just type the values that you want here instead. Ok, now I'd like to move the head. I'm starting from the core bone for the whole head, and adding some rotation on the frame number 20. I'd like to rotate the face together with the head, so adding a bit of rotation to the core bone of the face is actually what we need. And now it's time to test, so let's hit play. Great, it already looks better, and of course, we don't stop here. Now I will add some movement to the face, starting from the moustache. Same as before, I'm rotating it on frame number 20, and just keeping the original values of the frames number 0 and 40. Same for the second one. Good. Let's move to the crown and do the same for every single tip. Let's move them to the right using the rotate tool, but be careful in the narrow areas here, because if you rotate too much, the image might look distorted. Ok, now I'm choosing all the bones that I've moved on the crown, copying their frames number 0 and pasting their values all together to the frame number 40. It's just easier to do it in a bulk, that's all. I'm also rotating the small bones on the tips, just like we did before with the larger bones. Hitting play. Looks quite interesting already, but now let's add the rotation to the hair and see how it affects our idle animation. Let's choose all the bones attached to the hair and create a keyframe on the frame number 0, because we're going to make changes to all of these bones. You can actually create the same keyframe on the frame number 40 now, so that later on you won't need to copy-paste the values. 
Now, moving to the frame number 20 and starting to make changes here. I'm starting from the lower bones because they affect those smaller bones at the top. So, I'm just moving them a bit to the right using the rotate tool, one bone after another. These smaller bones are going to be the second layer of movement and it will make our animation look richer later on, when I'll show you some tricks. But for now, we're just adding a simple rotation here. Then hitting the play button. Nice! Now I'll take the hair animation one step ahead and also make some changes to the scale of the hair. Choosing one of the lower bones, switching to the scale tool and making this part of the hair look a bit bigger by using the red and the green handles. And of course, don't forget to capture the initial scale on frame number 0 and 40. Let's do the same for the rest of the hair, but this time I'll make the left part a bit smaller instead and the right side is going to look a bit bigger. Now, I've noticed that the central part doesn't move as much as it should, so I add a bit more rotation to the lower bone. Good. Let's make the movement more significant on the left side of the hair and rotate the bones a bit to the left on the frames number 0 and 40. Great! You see that almost every time I make some changes, I test the whole animation. That's because I'm trying to bring all these tiny movements into a harmony. In the end, the player will see the whole character, and I want to make sure that the whole animation looks right. And if I see some inconsistencies here, I try to fix them on the spot. It's just all about trial and error. Alright, and now one of my favorite parts. We're going to add some 3D feel to the face by changing the scale and the position of the eyes. So I'm selecting the central bone of the eye on the left side, then choosing the scale tool and making the eye look a bit smaller. You see, I'm making changes on a single bone, but that bone controls the whole eye. Then I'm making the same changes for a brow. And after that, I'm switching to translate tool and moving the brow a bit down, so that it fits the eye shadow. Good. Now, I've done the changes on the frame number 0, so it means that the changes affect the whole animation. If I want to get the original scale and position without deleting these keyframes, I just need to drag these keyframes to the right. And since we don't have any keyframes on the left, you will see those dotted lines. And the values in this area are actually our original values for the bone. Let's create the keyframes for the brow and the eye on the frame number 0, and then switch the places between the frame number 20 and 0. So I basically want this eye to start small, then become bigger on the frame 20 as the character turns his head, and then go back in size on frame number 40. Something like this. Let's do the same for the second eye, but this time we'll focus on the position of the eye instead of the size. The changes in the size are minor. Okay. Now, the mouth. As I said in the previous video, I want to move the right side and the left side of the mouth separately. And here is why. The left side should look smaller as the character turns his head. So, let's make the changes to the scale on the left side and then control the position of the whole mouth via the central bone. See, it already looks as if our King Broker turns his head to us. Let's proceed to the moustache and make the same kind of changes as we did for the eyes, both scale and the position. Same for the second one. Good. Then copying the keyframe number 0 for all of the bones that we've moved and passing on the frame number 40 to close the loop. Great. The only part we didn't touch yet is the beard, and here we'll change the rotation instead of the scale. Let's test the result. Very nice! Now, you might notice that when the face is moving, the garment looks a bit static. So let's change the scale for the left part of the garment. It should also start small and become larger on frame number 20. That's better! And here's another useful technique that I'm about to teach you. We're going to make the garment look 3D by using the technique called freeform deformation. Remember that we've created all these yellow lines in the previous video? Now we're going to animate some of them. Let's hold Ctrl on Windows or Command on Mac and select all the vertices on the central line. Make sure you don't miss any of them. 
OK, then let's go to the frame number 40 and using the Translate tool, move the whole selection to the left. Then going back to the frame number 20, move the whole selection a bit to the right. And then we're just copying the frame number 40 to the frame number 0. Let's check the result. That looks better than before. Now I'm going to apply the same changes to the crown as I did for the face and for the garment, so I'm going to speed up the video to save your time. Ok, now the crown looks better and we're going to animate more body parts. Well yeah, we still didn't touch the lower part of the arms and the legs and I'm not going to leave this area static. So let's start with the arms and apply the rotation to the lower part to the right on the frame 20 and to the left on the frame number 0 and 40. Now the second arm. Good. Now, I've just noticed that though we turn our character's face towards the player, the face itself looks kinda silly because it's static, no emotions there. So I'm going to make the king frown by adding some rotation to the brows, like this. I also need to adjust the position of the brow and I also want the king to open the eyes wider on frame 20 and make the eyes half closed on frames 0 and 40. I'm selecting the bones that control the upper lashes and moving them down using the Translate tool. Then I'm moving the lower lashes a bit upwards and that really gives our king this nasty snobbish look. He finally shows some emotions. I want to take it to extreme so I add more rotation to the brows and now the king starts to look angry. See, we didn't change much but the character really feels alive because of the emotions. I'll also add the rotation to the right part of the mouth and I feel like I need to adjust the position of the eye on the left so that it feels right. Same about the other eye, the mouth and the moustache. As I said earlier, there is a lot of trial and error in the animation process. You set the core movement and then you make tons of small adjustments until it starts to feel right. And don't be afraid to experiment because this is how you learn. I want to proceed to the lower part of the body and animate the lower tips of the garment as well. I'm switching to the rotate tool and on the frame 0 I'm rotating the tips away from the body and on the frame 20 closer to the body, like this. Then I saw a problem in the center and I'm fixing it with a freeform deformation of the garment. Looks better now. I'm going to make some additional adjustments to the body and the position of the bones, so I'm speeding up the video again. Now it's time to animate the feet. What I'm going to do here is just slightly move them towards the center on the frame 20. Don't overdo it, it should be a tiny movement, but trust me, it makes a difference. Ok, so our animation already looks not bad at all. And now I'm going to teach you some of my favorite tricks that really bring the animation to a whole new level. 
First, we'll start from selecting all the keyframes for all of the bones. Then go to the widget called Graph and click this little icon. I'm moving the graph handles a bit to the center. And here is why I'm doing all this. The character moves differently than before. I would say it also looks more natural. So what is graph and how should you use it? Graph represents how fast the value of a keyframe changes to the value of the second keyframe. By default, you get a linear graph, and it means that you see the values changing at the constant speed. Now, if you want to create a breathing effect for a character, you should switch to Bezier curve and adjust the handles as you like. This type of graph allows you to customize how fast the values between the keyframes will change, creating a movement that's much more pleasing to watch. Okay, so that was the first trick that I wanted to show, and now I'm about to teach you the second one. Let's choose the lower bones of the hair, select all the keyframes, and click Offset button. Then, let's drag the keyframes about 5 frames to the right. The length of the animation didn't change, it is still 40 frames. Now, let's change the upper bones of the hair as well, select them one by one, then select the keyframes, and drag the keyframes about 10 frames to the right. Let's see what we've got now. Great! Now the hair moves after the body, following its movement with a slight delay. And what's great about that is that the head doesn't look flat anymore, the hair movement looks rich. Ok, so shall we stop here? Of course not! Let's do the same for the hands movement, choosing the lower hand bones and this time offsetting them 5 frames to the left. Looks really nice, but let's continue with the king's garment. Selecting the upper bones and choosing all keyframes except the mesh deformation and dragging them 5 frames to the right. Ok, now the lower bones, 10 frames to the right. Excellent! See how much better it looks now? I've done some additional adjustments later on and I've used the same techniques that I've already shown you, so I'm not going to bore you with another time lapse. And that brings us to the end of this tutorial. I hope you found it useful, and if you learned something new, then give it a like and leave a comment down below. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.